Thanks very much, Ingrid, and delighted to be here today in this wonderful new venue for this conference. I know it's the first time we've had it here. But it's great to see so many here. I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful day. And thank you as well to every. Thank you to everyone who's uh, played a part in organizing this conference, and particularly to Eve. I know she's done a huge amount this year and in previous years, so thank you to everyone who's been involved in, in organizing what I'm sure is going to be, a, say, a wonderful day. I was here last year, and uh, the second time I've come, and very much conscious that this annual Community Heritage Conference is a great opportunity to recognize the role that communities and volunteers across Scotland play in celebrating and caring for our heritage, and also learning from one another. Now, I've worked with Historic Scotland and the Royal Commission for the last three and a half years. I have to say, throughout that time, I've found the commitment and passion of volunteers, community groups across the heritage landscape truly inspirational. And I think the, the involvement of so many people in so many ways, you know, what struck me is that it emphasizes you know, the democratization of our heritage. You know, it's now very well accepted across the country that our heritage... Oh, Great, you can hear me. That, uh, that our heritage belongs not just to a particular class, not just to professionals, but to all of us. And it's incre increasingly clear, too, that voluntary activity in our heritage is good for our health and well-being, as well as being good for the heritage itself. Even just this morning, just chatting to a few people, a number of different stories about how being involved in volunteering in heritage you know, it really does help with people's health and, uh, and outlook. And looking out across the audience this morning, you certainly all look very fit and well. Now, I experienced myself some of the, the buzz that comes from heritage volunteering just a few weeks ago when I went on a Scottish Coastal Heritage at Risk workshop day. And I'm not saying that just because Tom's uh, following me onto the platform. But it was a, w a wonderful sunny Saturday in Anstruther. I learned a great deal about coastal archaeology and how to record it, and I met some really interesting people. Why, I wondered, would anyone want to do anything else on a Saturday than that? It was an absolutely brilliant day. So with, with all that in mind, I'm, I'm really pleased today to announce the launch of the new Scor Scottish Heritage Angel Awards, very much the first awards of their kind in Scotland. i just move the... Come on. The awards are intended to help support the delivery of Scotland's historic environment strategy, Our Place and Time. As many of you all know, and many of you have been involved in the consultation over the last couple of years, Our Place and Time was very much developed collaboratively, We're talking to people across the landscape and beyond, following the review of historic environment policy in 2012, which Historic Scotland led on behalf of the Scottish Government. That provides a national framework for all parts of the sector to work in partnership to deliver you know, really positive outcomes for our rich and diverse historic environment. And the vision, I think it came up with, it was lots and lots of thought and ink went into the words, but the vision, I think, at the end of the day is fantastic, is that Scotland's historic environment is understood and valued, cared for and protected, and enjoyed and enhanced, that it should be at the heart of a flourishing and sustainable Scotland, and we passed on with pride to benefit future generations. I'm sure everyone can sign up to that, and clearly lots of people did through the, the consultation. And that vision is about a fundamental transformation. It's about people about how the historic environment can deliver for all of us, as well, of course, as being protected and promoted as an asset in its own right. And it's, of course, that transformation and that vision which the new body, which we're bringing into being over the next year, Historic Environment Scotland, will help to lead. So the strategy provides a very apt context for these awards, and I'll come on in a few minutes to what the categories are, how you can get involved in that. But the sponsor of the awards is very apt too. The awards, is, as you know, are supported by the Andrew Lloyd Webber Foundation, which already sponsors the English Heritage Angel Awards. And I do want at this point to acknowledge very much our collective thanks to the foundation and to Lord Lloyd Webber personally and his commitment to preserving and celebrating our heritage and also to supporting and really promoting community engagement shines through very powerfully when you talk to him, when you hear him. He is really very much behind uh, this project and, and was very, very keen to develop it in Scotland and support a, a distinctive way of rolling this out in Scotland as well. And I also want to say a big thank you to, to Archaeology Scotland and to Scottish Civic Trust, who've worked in partnership with Historic Scotland, with ARCAMS, and with the Scottish Government to take this project forward over the last probably year or so. 
And just at this point, just want to say a particular thanks to John Peelan, who's sitting there in the front row, the director of Scottish Civic Trust, who has coordinated our efforts brilliantly over the last few months on behalf of that steering group that I chair. So why are we all putting so much effort and money into the awards? And our unapologetically ambitious aim for the awards is ultimately a better understood, cared for and valued historic environment, very much in line with the vision in our place and time. The awards are aimed at people like you and all the other volunteers and community groups across Scotland whose work in looking after, recording, exploring and promoting heritage is setting such a great example. So what are the categories? There are five categories and again you'll have more information in the pack, there, the, the, the card that's in your pack. Investigating and recording for volunteer community-led projects, recording, well, you, can, you can read them there, caring and protecting, sharing and celebrating, capacity building, and lifetime contribution to heritage. And again, they very much map onto the, the historic environments strategy, our place and time. As I've already said, the outcomes that we want to see from the awards are that volunteers and community groups from a broad range of society enjoy better recognition of their role in recording, protecting and celebrating the historic environment. And as you say, that you can see the awards support the historic environment strategy in delivering successful and sustainable projects. It's about getting all of you and the many thousands of people across the country who are doing fantastic work in communities and volunteering more recognized and through that promote more people to get involved. So, we're, I say, uh, the, we're, we're launching it today. The forms are, are downloadable from the new website. And at the timetable over the next year, uh, application forms will be available from March. So we're launching it today. If people have got interest, want to express interest, the, the application forms will actually be available from March. And then judging will take place over the summer next year. And we're delighted to announce that uh, Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber himself will be one of the judges. We're still looking at who else will be on that judging panel and we'll be announcing that in a while. The winners and shortlisted projects will be announced at a special ceremony in November of next year. And again, details of that to, to, to be announced. Uh, but again, the Andrew Lloyd Webber Foundation and uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber himself have obviously got lots of contacts and uh, certainly seeing the, the, the English awards over the last two or three years, often in, uh, in, in wonderful venues. So I'm sure that you all have ideas for projects and people to nominate, and we look forward to receiving the submissions in due course and seeing what comes out of the awards. And I'd like to end with a quote from Fiona Hislop, our Cabinet Secretary for Culture and External Affairs, who herself has been very supportive of this project and of the awards. And she said uh, a, a few weeks ago, Scotland's heritage is of us all and for us all, empowering, enriching and shaping our communities the contribution of volunteers and voluntary groups to understanding, protecting and valuing our heritage is tremendous and I'm delighted that the Scottish Heritage Angel Awards will recognise that good work. This exciting new enterprise is unique in Scotland and supports the delivery of the, the new strategy and I hope it will inspire people to get involved in voluntary work which celebrates our heritage. And I think that quote from the Cabinet Secretary Bench sums up why we were so keen to, to get these awards rolling and to announce them here today, you know, what is a, an obviously a, a, a very apt conference for them to be announced. So thank you very much and I hope good luck with anyone who applies for them as well. Thank you. Thank you.